all on the count of him. We give him all of the praise. For he is worthy. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be adored. We glorify you, Jesus. Had 
destroyed. The men that were faithfully and the overseers of them that were Jahath and Obadiah, the Levites of the son of Morari and Zechariah and Meshulam and the sons of the Kohathites sent to set it forward and the other Levites and all that could skill of instruments of music and they were over the bearers of burdens and were overseers of all that royal the work in any manner of service. And of the Levites, there were scribes and officers and porters. And when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah found a book of the law All right. of the Lord given by Moses. And the word of the Lord is rich, it is powerful, and it is blessed. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, why? Why? W. W. C. C. It'll make sense in a minute. All right. Spirit of the living God, speak a word to us today that will cause us to run and grab hold of the destiny to which we have been assigned. Yes. The words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength, rock, and redeemer. The people of God say it. Amen. Amen. We have been looking and studying the life and the reign of King Josiah as a personification, as an example, as a study in spiritual maturity. Uh -huh. We understand that he began his reign at only eight years old and he was a follower of King David. Right. And as he progressed, the Bible teaches us that he matured into a leader, but he was a leader who led by doing. Finally, we come to the stage three, which I would categorize as the optimal stage in his, his life and his ministry that will speak to us as we are trying to develop ourselves as spiritually mature people, and that is to lead, but to do so by empowering people to become their best selves. Uh -huh. If you think about it from almost every aspect of life, this is how leadership is supposed to function and progress. If you're an old school parent like I have, you would choose food for your children, put it in their mouths, and then they would be able to eat the food that you chewed for them. When the child matured enough to chew for him or herself, the parent would then take the spoon, dip it into the oatmeal, and feed the child. And even when you had taught them both how to feed and to cook for themselves, the truth is most of the time you would, as the parent, most likely be the provider of the food. The greatest stage, though, comes when the child that you raised has reached adulthood and can not only cook the food, but has taken his or her heart on money, bought the food, cooked it, and invited you over to eat the food. That's called empowerment. Uh -huh. And proper life principles will find progress or this type of progression in almost every aspect of life. We see it as we were sure physically financially. It's great if I take you to the store and say you can get what you want. It's on me. But uh, it's much better if I have mentored you and trained you and powered you to the status whereby you can do that for somebody else. Jay-Z right. said it better than me. What's better than one billionaire? Two. When you have to get to a place where you begin to understand what God is trying to do in your life. He's trying to stretch your faith. And here I am. I have such crazy faith uh, and a crazy vision and my spirit has been tuned uh, right. in such a way that I'm not just expecting God to send millionaires to us. Uh, I'm expecting us to become millionaires. I'm not expecting God to send me a miracle. I'm expecting God to empower me to yes, become a miracle yes, yes. worker. I'm supposed to be mentally well. I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail. And the next stage in my progression is that I'm supposed to birth that type of offspring over and over and over again. You see, if the person on your row is not excited about what I just said, you should find somebody else because they are selfish and they have no oh, expectations. Yeah. They only want blessings for themselves and they don't think that God can make them a blessing. But you sure, ask people, Great. God, if you've got breath in your body, two legs, two hands, two feet, you're already blessed. But you need to have an expectation. 
intention that says right. God. Uh, that blessing is cool. I thank you for it. Uh, but I need for you to not bless me, uh, but make me a blessing so that I can bless somebody else. I feel like preaching already in this place. Uh, because some of us understand that it's one thing uh, to receive a miracle, but it's another thing uh, to be a miracle, to put your hands uh, on somebody and cause uh, their lives to change. One of the most awesome miracles Jesus uh, ever did in his great ministry was uh, walking on water, catch this, uh, in a storm. If uh, you're not careful, you will miss uh, that Peter caught a divine insight uh, as to how the human being uh, uh -huh. should navigate through storms as well. Peter said, Jesus, if you're really all-powerful, if uh, you're really the son of God, if you're really the person who you say you are, then cause me, make me, empower me uh, to do what you do. I don't want to just marvel uh, at your ability to walk through this storm. Uh, I want you to cause my legs uh, to function just like your legs. Uh, I want you to empower my ability uh, to be just uh, like you. This is why when I say I'm expecting a miracle, uh, I'm expecting a miracle because uh, I have an expectation to become yeah. uh, a miracle worker. I'm expecting a healing uh, because I'm expecting the promises of God uh, to lay hands on the sick and cause uh, them to recover. I'm expecting a Pentecostal expression uh, to fall on me, not just to dance, not to just yeah. shout yeah. to praise, uh, but to preach people uh, in uh, to a place uh, that has such conviction right. and authority uh, and power uh, that thousands of people feel uh, a prick in their rear cage uh, and in their hearts and cry out, Lord, uh, what shall uh, I do? You might need to talk to the Lord one the time and say, Lord, uh, make me like you. See, that's the next that's progression. Right. I need uh, to be like Jesus. I need uh, to do some things. of his reign and uh, he has grown and developed in uh, to a great leader uh, and his kingship now is being marked uh, by his ability to empower people. So uh, we find at this stage he's commissioned those who are leaders in the kingdom uh, to carry out a new assignment. Their task now uh, is to repair the house uh, of the Lord. They have to repair the temple. The temple has uh, been broken down. It has been damaged uh, and it is in need of desperate repair, which uh, is providing for us a prophetic picture of where Israel specifically is uh, as a nation. Israel is broken down. They are in disarray. They're virtually destroyed. They're damaged uh, and they have been in this state because of uh, the previous kings and administrations uh, were intentionally evil. They were following after other gods and even sacrificing uh, their own children to these gods, burning incense and uh, desecrating Israel's most sacred symbol uh, of Yahweh's presence uh, and commitment to being their god and allowing them to be his uh, people. We see this cycle that typifies Israel's story past. They would uh, sin against God. God would deliver them. They would turn away again. Uh, God would deliver them. They would turn away. God would uh, deliver them. But it's interesting because uh, as I was doing some research, I found out that this particular temple's desecration primarily came uh, under the reign of King Anan and King Manasseh. Uh -huh. If uh, you were to take some time and research the king's 
who reigned in Judah, you'll find that there are certain kings who God says were evil kings. And when you look at the life of Manasseh, there's almost nothing written about him except that he was an evil king. But I want you to catch this. He was an evil king who reigned longer than any king in Judah. Manasseh, the evil king, reigned for 50 Five years. I'm gonna say that again. Manasseh reigned for 55 right. years. Now, 55 years is a long time to do anything, but it's especially long when the leader or the leadership has led the people away from the standards and the statutes of God. So, 55 years, a double nickel of being evil and yeah. sacrificing and desecrating uh, the temple was the reign of King uh, Manasseh. But what gets me, what gets me is uh, that it appears that God uh, not only allowed this type of leadership to continue, uh, but that God didn't do anything to step in and yeah. change uh, or alter it. Uh, now, if you're thinking like me with this curly hair, this is the point that scares me the most because uh, from a theological standpoint everything uh, that we understand about the character of God uh, cannot allow sin uh, to go unpunished. God's character demands a response to sin. Uh, so my question is why then didn't in the span of 55 years, uh, why didn't God bring any type of punishment uh, to Israel during Manasseh's evil reign? Why didn't God uh, send some plagues? Why didn't uh -huh. God uh, raise up a prophet? Why didn't God intervene uh, and say your sin uh, can uh, not continue? Well, uh, as I began to pray, I heard the Lord say, uh, I did punish them. Uh, I'm sitting here at my desk saying, what, Lord? I haven't seen that you did anything. Uh, I didn't see that you did brought anybody up. Uh, but God said, I did punish them. Uh, and it's interesting because uh, if you look at what happened, uh, I just told you that God did not do anything uh, to stop their evil. And what the Lord revealed to me was, uh, this was exactly what their punishment was. Uh, Y'all looking at me funny, but let me see if I can work it down. Uh, sometimes God's punishment uh, is to allow you to do exactly uh, what you want to do uh, and to leave you unchecked. Uh, and whether you are a king, a queen, a president, uh, an Indian chief, a leader of any kind, uh, if ever you decide that you have uh, more sense than God, uh, you have entered into one of the most dangerous places uh, that one person could be. Uh, history is on my side because uh, it proves that when human beings uh, are left to make decisions uh, outside the will, uh, better yet, I like this better, the boundaries uh, that God has set up and established, uh, what happens is we always uh, make the wrong decisions. Uh, you probably never heard it like this that God's will is synonymous with his boundaries. God's will is synonymous with his boundaries. They are one and the same. I'm going to give this to you for free. You can put it on Facebook if you like. But this was the revelation God gave me. Boundaries let us know how far we can go. And most us usually understand this in terms uh, of limitations. Uh -huh. uh, but what about the reality of understand, understanding boundaries uh, as they relate to expectations? Well, uh, you see, our decisions uh, must line up both with God's limitations uh, and his expectations uh, for our lives. At any time we step outside of those, we put ourselves and those whom we are leading 
in great danger. Uh, let me see if I can paint a picture. A few years ago, Glamour Magazine awarded Caitlyn Jenner its prestigious uh, Woman of the Year Award for 2015. Uh, for those of you who might have been living under the rock for the last five or six years, uh, the Glamour Magazine Award usually goes to a woman uh, who has overcome something great and accomplished uh, a major accomplishment in life, such as uh, beating racism or overcoming coming cancer or doing something that makes a tremendous advancement in the lives of women. Well, Caitlyn Jenner is the former Olympic decathlon champion of Wheaties Box fame from the 70s and 80s known as Bruce Jenner. Bruce had surgery to become a woman and they, Glamour Magazine, decided to, that we're going to celebrate him, her, whatever you want to call it, to, as the woman of the year. This is what happens when human beings are left to their own devices because we think that we know more than God. Now, most of us probably find trouble with this as it relates to them stepping outside of God's boundaries. And limitations. I saw y'all nodding at me. Y'all like that point. But what if I told you that we are functioning in just as much disgust and degradation and error when it comes to the discussion of God's boundaries as they relate to God's expectations? <laughs> Excuse me. For how we should live our lives. So you got to understand boundaries tell how far you can go. I'm gonna say it one more time. Boundaries tell you how far you can go. So if you are a leader and you haven't gotten far enough, you're not following God's boundaries. Yeah. If you are chosen, if you are anointed in God's eyes and he gives you an instruction like succeed and then when the hard times come you decide to be like me and go get a part time job, then you are just as off yeah. like me yeah. as God in God's eyes as Caitlyn Jenner. That's alright, I'm going to take the run of this because I understand what has to happen. We've got to clean up this house uh, yes. from the high places yes. uh, because yes. if we do not uh, we are in the same danger yes. uh, as carrying on as did the evil king uh, Manasseh uh, with God sitting on his throne uh, and saying I'm going to allow uh, who walk in the house of the Lord. Uh, that's just the King James version uh, of the word word. Uh, you want some money in your hand
outlining people that's meant to work. People that had special skills. That's right. I said, I'm going to use my skills to build this house. People that had special talents. Levites. Workers of music. Use my talent to build this house. Then there was also a designation of people just as significant. They just called them builders. People who could figure out I can carry the stone from here to here. Yes. I can't play a trumpet. Well, well. I can lift the rock. That's right. I might not be able to sow, but I can have a relay. Uh-huh. And everybody that decided to work, the Bible said that the money came yes. into the hands yes. of the overseers. Yes. For them to have the resources that they needed. All right to effectively change their environment. I believe that the Lord is releasing an anointing here today. Yes, yes. Crazy thing, I don't even know if I wrote this up. It's just that when they made the decision to work, uh -huh. that's it. That's it. the money came. You would think that how we do it in America, you work, then you get paid. Yeah. It's not what God did here. Yeah. They decided to work. Yes. There you go. And the people went collecting money yeah. for the task at hand. Yeah. The money was there all the time. Yes, but there was no decision yeah. to put it to use. I believe that the storage houses are being opened up. Yeah. Uh, bless his name. For the people that have a decision to work. Yeah. The Lord just reminded me of a vision that I had this morning. Yes, I'm done. And I didn't see all of y'all. I can't even Sometimes I see y'all, sometimes I don't. I saw myself. <laughs> Standing under a thunder cloud. Yeah. Right. Of money. Directly from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. And catch this. I'm in it. And it's not just papers, all kind of coins, diamonds. But none of it's hurting me. And what happens is it's falling all around me. And then all of a sudden, what I was standing on began to shake and break. And then the same thing started happening. Money started coming up the other way. Yeah. And coming up the other way. Yeah. And all of a sudden it was this crazy cycle of money coming down, money coming up, money coming down, money coming up, money coming down, money coming up, money coming down. I said, Jesus. What did I eat last night? Oh. <laughs> Jesus. You gotta have a mind. Yeah, that's right. And make a decision. And God says, you make a decision. Yes. I'll release provision. That's the yes. 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 You make a decision. Yes. I'll release provision. Yes. Yes. I'll release that anointing oh. into this house Thank you, Jesus. right Thank you. now. Yes. I think you need to stand on your feet and receive it. Yeah. Yeah. You make a decision, God is going to release provision. Hallelujah. I just pray a special release of your anointing and favor. That you move us into a greater level of expectation to be miracle workers, to be the people that come together to do those things that eyes have not seen. That you empower us to empower others and to be.
build your kingdom. Yes. If you believe it and receive it, just open up your mouth and say, I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive.